Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. One more time. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Awesome. Welcome to this year's SUNY Online Summit, which is actually the 25th summit for online education in SUNY. I'm really glad to be here today. My name is Kim Scalzo, and I'm Senior Associate Provost at SUNY System Administration with responsibility for digital innovation and academic services. And it is so great to see so many people here with us today. We have, I think about 85 people here in the room with us at the SUNY Global Center and uh, more than 350 people who have registered to join us online throughout the next two days. Uh, this is our first return to the SUNY Global Center um, for this event since the pandemic. <laughs> Um, you know, we were in person for the first time again last year in Syracuse, but um, I think we all remember well, those of us who were here four years ago, um, and then going home to very quickly prepare our campuses for the almost immediate pivot to remote instruction. And when I reflect on that, um, I always think this community did not disappoint, right, the SUNY community and around the world, really. When I look at where we are today and the incredible work being done um, by our campuses and the SUNY online team to advance online education at SUNY, um, it's just so gratifying and humbling and I'm thrilled to get to be part of this community. Thank you. Um, today's event does not come together uh, without a lot of uh, work, without a, a team of people and a lot of planning. Uh, so I'd like to thank the SUNY Online leadership team, including Alexandra Pickett, um, who leads the planning work for this event and those from SUNY System Administration who are here joining us over the next two days. And with that in mind, very quickly, um, I want to get to introducing our first speaker for today. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Ram Rama Subramanian, who is our new Executive Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. He is also the Provost and the President of the Research Foundation at SUNY. In this capacity, Ram's focus revolves around collaborating with various SUNY stakeholders, including campus presidents, provosts, vice presidents for research and economic development, deans, faculty, students, and leadership within SUNY System Administration and the Research Foundation. As the leader of SUNY's academic enterprise, Ram's main goal is to drive the implementation of innovative programs, initiatives, policies, and infrastructure in support of SUNY's academic mission and research objectives. Of course, aligning with the Chancellor's strategy of excellence, accessibility, and affordability across all of SUNY's academic programs. Before joining SUNY, Ram served as the Vice President for Research at the University of Virginia starting in 2017. His career trajectory includes pivotal roles such as the Program Director for the Engineering Research Center's program and the Lead Program Director for the Integrative Graduate Education and Research Traineeship Program at the National Science Foundation. His extensive professional career includes holding the position of D.W. Reynolds, Distinguished Professor and Department Chair of Mechanical Engineering at Clemson University, where he also held a joint faculty appointment as a professor of bioengineering. Prior to that, he was a professor of mechanical and aerospace engineering at North Carolina State University, and he held research roles at the James River Corporation, which is now Georgia Pacific, and Syracuse University. So in some ways, it's probably like coming home. Um, Ram's research interests span a wide interdisciplinary spectrum encompassing engineering, biology, physical sciences, and medicine. His contributions to the field have been extensively published in engineering and biomedical journals, and he has notably served as an associate editor for IEEE Access, which is the multidisciplinary open access journal. He continues his research pursuits in tissue engineering, actively advising a PhD student at the University of Virginia. He received his BSME from the National Institute of Technology in India, his uh, MS from Miami University, and a PhD in mechanical engineering from Syracuse University. So that's the formal introduction. I always like to throw in a couple of personal remarks. So Ram has been here for four months, and I'm sure it's been a whirlwind. Um, I can tell you that he is already a champion for the work that we all do in online education. 
and the opportunities it provides to increase access to a SUNY education. Personally, I have found him to be a really thoughtful and an insightful person who sees the big opportunities for SUNY to lead and innovate in ways that make a real difference for our students and faculty. I'm really pleased that he is able to be here with us today in person. Please join me in giving him a warm SUNY welcome to share some opening remarks with us. Good morning. Good morning. And thank you for those uh, kind remarks and the detailed introduction. Um, I want to start uh, first by acknowledging uh, Kim and Dan uh, Feinberg uh, for their leadership on online education uh, at SUNY over the years. Uh, without them, uh, their leadership, uh, it is difficult to uh, accomplish what you all have accomplished. I also want to uh, I also want to acknowledge campus leaders and people who work on campus on the online education uh, uh, as well. Uh, as part of this team that has made all of this uh, all of this happen, and SUNY is uh, strikingly uh, clear about uh, about our unique, uh, single-minded uh, goal is to enhance the success of all our students and include students from all walks of life to have a chance, and that uh, student upward mobility, student success, really uh, is the. DNA of uh, SUNY, which I have really in four months in, of immersion, I've really gotten uh, uh, into it uh, quite well. And in fact, I came here because of those uh, clear objectives of upward mobility. As a first gen student uh, college graduate myself and the role of higher education that, uh, that uh, it played in my life, I, uh, I really felt that it's time for me to focus uh, on giving it back to students and the platform that I have is SUNY is the best in the nation for doing that. So I'm so honored to be in this position. Um, I know that uh, all programs have a modest start. And I was reminded that uh, when you started uh, 25 years ago, 30 years ago uh, with the uh, first Sloan Foundation grant uh, at the implementation, you had um, four faculty members, four campuses, and 56 online students, 56 students in 1994. And to contrast that with uh, 2022, 2023 academic year, 64 campuses offering 40,000 online course sections annually and more than 900 online degree and certificate programs to more than 259,000 students enrolling in one or more online courses in the 2022-23. So if this is not success, I don't know what is. So congratulations to you and, 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 and what you have been able to accomplish. Um, and not only that SUNY has uh, done um, incredibly well in standing this uh, idea of online education and, uh, and making it accessible and uh, reaching vast number of students that I mentioned, um, you also done this very thoughtfully with uh, research-informed uh, decisions and pedagogical decisions that uh, have a basis for making certain changes. And, and that uh, collection of knowledge is acknowledged uh, well but nationally. So yeah, several uh, institutions have reached out and adopted the methods that you have developed. So you should all be part of yourself. I'm part of you and, and we should all be part of uh, SUNY for for that uh, leadership role that we play in, in the lives of students throughout the country. Online education um, is, uh, is highly regarded. Uh, Pre-pandemic, there was uh, it, just, a, uh, in mathematical terms, of a singularity at the pandemic for online education. There was this. Uh, there was a bit of a doubt on uh, is is online education the same as in class education, and uh, and academia has debated that many many uh, for many many years, and and the scale size and scale of uh, of uh, 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 of uh, adoption was not uh, very large, but it was beginning to have good traction um, in, uh, in, in academia, particularly reaching students who want uh, flexibility uh, and uh, people who uh, have jobs and they have to take courses, et cetera. Uh, particularly uh, the online education became attractive. This was, uh, the pandemic really turned as, as uh, Kim said, 
uh, I was at UVA and it was the students had gone home on spring break and uh, a decision was made that they're not coming back. We're not going to have them come back to campus, but their semester has to continue. We really, really had one week, like you all did, just about a week to move, I believe, 3,000 plus courses online. Uh, no other choice but uh, doing that. And students did not come back. They did finish the semester. So academia can turn on a dime. We are thoughtful. Uh, deliberate on things, uh, but when it comes to uh, delivering uh, uh, when we need to, we can actually turn on a dime. So that really changed the perception that academia is slow and, and very uh, uh, bureaucratic and there's too much discussion that none of that is, uh, I believe in that, because when it comes to implementing, yes, we have to be thoughtful because we're, we're thinking about educating future generations and how we impart knowledge uh, on them. So it's a very serious business. So it ha we have to be thoughtful. But when it's time to deliver on, uh, this is the only mode and otherwise students don't learn, and we delivered and we are pleasantly surprised by how uh, well the online education uh, was adopted and uh, and the student outcomes uh, were, were measured and, and, and so on. There's really a significant, uh, uh, significant increase in confidence in online education. And as you know from SUNY data, the, the number of online sections and online courses has not gone back to pre-pandemic levels. It is, it is significantly higher, at least 2x that. So that's a testament to the need that uh, the online education uh, is, uh, is here to stay. And with, uh, with, uh, you know, with the developing uh, new technologies, the beauty is this is we are connected uh, at the hip with the technology, technology development. So as technology develops, we adopt and we have this very process of continuous improvement that we adopt new technologies. Um, so in, I, I remember in uh, 1994, I taught my class online uh, hybrid that I would teach in a class where they would uh, videotape and send it, it's called video-based engineering education. So it's not online, it's online, but actually there'll be a room full of VHS tapes that they would actually copy the tape and send it to the student. And then they will, you know, they will have a proctor in their places and they will write exams, et cetera. So the students did quite, uh, quite well. Uh, and from, uh, as technologies changed, I, in, even in my own teaching, it became CD based. Then it uh, slowly became asynchronous online based recorded once, and then it became live online. So it's kind of a, such a rapid progression. The idea is the important thing. So why did we do video-based education? People, in fact, I had a student at the time, he was, uh, he was, uh, he was F-16 pilot um, in, in uh, flying uh, sorties in the Iraq uh, war. And he took my class and he actually just uh, overwhelmed by him doing an assignment from the, from the war field, watching the video and then sending me back the assignment on time. It's just unbelievable. He actually invited him to the class when he came back to the States. So that is the power of reaching uh, students in different walks of life, where they are and meet them where they are and give, bring the quality education to them. So what you're doing is extremely important. So now <clears throat> I've had, uh, you know, con uh, um, I'm a big believer in really looking at what is the big picture and what we do and how does it fit in. And the chancellor is the same way. So we are having conversations about what is the what is the role of uh, what is the size and scale of online uh, in proportion to uh, in proportion to in class and what should uh, uh, you know how uh, how should we uh, provide uh, vision and guidance uh, to the to the uh, to to this whole uh, online education? So some of the things are you know uh, online education can be a tool for um, increasing enrollment. Uh, you can access students that wouldn't otherwise enroll. Uh, enhancing student success when you have online recorded lectures, online interaction. As you all know, uh, students uh, have less inhibition when they when they are online to ask a question than in, in in this room sitting somewhere in the middle and raise their hand up. So there, there's interactions are are uh, are better, and as a, as a result, they learn. And they, this is very uh, this is the early early version of a personalized education uh, that that we have uh, in in academia. So that that's one. Uh, uh, and uh, the third uh, aspect is. Uh, diversity, equity, inclusion. People who have jobs that uh, are uh, rigid in terms of time generally are the uh, lower paying jobs. And, and we know that they are disproportionately occupied by uh, you know, uh, uh, diverse, uh, uh, diverse and uh, uh, new immigrants and so on. So having, giving them access to this with this flexibility is another, uh, another uh, reason. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and finally, uh, uh, using uh, um, 
online education as a tool to help uh, in-class uh, learning. So there is this another element to it, the hybrid education or not, not even hybrid, there is a separate online version of the class that students go to to enhance their understanding, uh, even for in-class students. There's just many objectives. So what combination of this and uh, that we are about is, is, is a leadership uh, discussion that, uh, that I'm having with the chancellor and hopefully we'll have, uh, we'll, have uh, we'll share some uh, elements of that with uh, Kim and, and you uh, as, as a whole. Now, uh, lastly, I want to uh, talk about um, exciting um, opportunities uh, that are, as, as I said, technology, the role of artificial intelligence, uh, you know, it's, it's a, uh, it, it is, uh, it's going to change lives in, in all aspects uh, of, of our lives. So one of the, uh, one of the elements, so you can look at this from a pedagogical perspective, uh, student learning and uh, an AI uh, monitoring of student progress in, on a personal basis and providing support, et cetera, is, is a tool that's being developed. And there are companies like Khan Academy for the, for the, uh, for the high school, uh, for the K through 12 education, have come up with some ideas of teaching students uh, as opposed to giving answers to them. So there is a lot of potential for uh, adopting, uh, uh, you know, uh, artificial intelligence into into um, in, into this uh, online uh, education. And uh, and how do we uh, in online education? Uh, it's just the pedagogical aspect. Then there's a business aspect of things, uh, where a student. Uh, is doing well in a certain course, can you suggest that you have, this is your pathway to go, maybe you're from community college, this is your pathway towards a degree in this area, this is your shortest path if you take these courses uh, in this sequence, because you're good at this. That's, that's the role of uh, academic advisor, that's what we do. But when you have 80 students that you advise uh, every semester, uh, oftentimes uh, you end up uh, just endorsing the courses that they want to take and see, yeah, this is all, uh, this is, yeah, you have met the prerequisites, I'm gonna sign off on it. Well, I don't know if we, I don't think we do that anymore. Sign off on a piece of paper and give them a computer card to take to a class. Uh, <laughs> some of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so, yeah, so I think the advising role an active advisor role, uh, you know, a, a, a life advisor companion for a student uh, in terms of academic progress, there's many, many, many opportunities. So this online platform, uh, provides uh, that ability for us to build on. So your job, uh, uh, your role uh, is only limited by your imagination. So you can uh, really think through and do uh, what you want to do. There's plenty, plenty of opportunities. So for in that regard, the, the, the overall, uh, you know, the DLE implementation that you have done as a team, that is the basis for uh, now uh, from a leadership, we can imagine other things because you've built this base. So congratulations and Thanks to all of you who have built that uh, base. And uh, again, as I said, it's your imagination that drives uh, the bus. So uh, with that, I want to stop and uh, answer any questions um, that you may have. So I'm happy to chat with anybody at breaks or what Great. I look forward to hearing some, uh, some portion of your, your discussions and, uh, and uh, listening to and learning more about what you do. And thank you very much for the opportunity to come and speak with you. Great, thank you, Ram. Thank you.